Hi, and welcome to our podcast. And this week at London Visited, we go to Covent Garden to tell you all about this iconic and very popular part of London. My name is Steve, and each week I'll bring to you the facts, history, and information about different parts of this great capital. If you've been to London, are planning on visiting, live here, or just love London from afar, then this is the podcast for you. Don't forget to visit our YouTube channel, London Visited, to see videos covering this place and so many others across London. And now, to this week's podcast. Covent Garden is a district in London on the eastern fringes of the West End, between St Martin's Lane and Drury Lane. It's associated with the former fruit and vegetable market in the central square, now a popular shopping and tourist site, and with the Royal Opera House, which itself may be referred to as Covent Garden. The district is divided by the main thoroughfare of Long Acre, north of which is given over to independent shops centred on Neil's Yard and Seven Dials, while the south contains the central square with its street performers and most of the historical buildings, theatres and entertainment facilities, including the London Transport Museum and the Theatre Royal Drury Lane. The area was filled until briefly settled in the 7th century when it became the heart of the Anglo-Saxon trading town of Lundenwick then abandoned at the end of the 9th century after which it returned to fields. By 1200, part of it had been walled off by Westminster Abbey for use as arable land and orchards. Referred to as the Garden of the Abbey and Convent, and later the Covent Garden, it was seized by Henry VIII and granted to the Earls of Bedford in 1552. The fourth Earl commissioned Ingo Jones to build some fine houses to attract wealthy tenants. Jones designed the Italianate Accarded Square, along with the Church of St Paul's. The design of the square was new to London and had significant influence on modern town planning, acting as the prototype for new estates as London grew. By 1654, a small open-air fruit and veg market had developed on the south side of the fashionable square. Gradually, both the market and the surrounding area fell into disrepute, as taverns, theatres, coffee houses and brothels opened up. By the 18th century, it became a well-known red-light district. An Act of Parliament was drawn up to control the area, and Charles Fowler's neoclassical building was erected in 1830 to cover and help organise the market. The market grew and further buildings were added, the Flora Hall, Charter Market and, in 1904, the Jubilee Market. By the end of the 1960s, traffic congestion was causing problems, and in 1974 the market relocated to the new Covent Garden Market, about three miles southwest of Nine Elms. The central building reopened as a shopping centre in 1980 and is now a tourist location containing cafes, pubs, small shops and a craft market called the Apple Market, along with other market held in the Jubilee Hall. The area has been served by the Piccadilly Line at Covent Garden Tube Station since 1907 and the 300-yard journey from Leicester Square Tube Station is the shortest in London. During the Roman period, what is now the Strand, running along the southern boundary of the area that was to become Covent Garden, was part of the route to Silchester, known as the Inter Seven, on the Atone itinerary. Excavations in 2006 at St Martin's in the Field revealed a late Roman grave, suggesting the site had been sacred since at least 410 AD. The area to the north of the Strand was long thought to have remained as unsettled fields until the 16th century. The theories by Alan Vince and Martin Biddle that there had been an Anglo-Saxon settlement to the west of the old Roman town of Londinium were borne out by excavations in 1985 and 2005. These revealed that a trading town called Lundervik developed around 600 AD, stretching from Trafalgar Square to Aldwych, with Covent Garden at the centre. Alfred the Great gradually shifted the settlement into the old Roman town of Londinium from around 886 AD onwards leaving no mark of the old town, and the site returned to fields. The first mention of a walled garden comes from the document circa 1200 AD, detailing land owned by the de Benedictine monks of the Abbey of St Peter, Westminster. A later document dated between 1250 and 1283 refers to the Garden of the Abbot and Convent of Westminster. By the 13th century, this had become a 40-acre quadrangle of mixed orchard, meadow pasture and arable land, laying between modern-day St Martin's Lane and Drury Lane, and Floral Street and Maiden Street. The use of the name Covent, an Anglo-French term for a religious community, equivalent to monastery or convent, appears in a document in 1515, 
when the Abbey, which had been letting out parcels of land along the north side of the Strand for inns and market gardens, granted a lease of the Ward Garden, referring to it as a garden called Covent Garden, and this is how it was recorded from then on. After the dissolution of the monasteries in 1540, Henry VIII took the land belonging to Westminster Abbey for himself. This included the Convent Garden and seven acres to the north called Long Acre. His son, Edward VI, granted it to John Russell, first Earl of Bedford, in 1552. The Russell family, who in 1694 were advanced in their peerage from Earl to Duke of Bedford, held the land until 1918. Russell built Bedford House and Garden on part of the land. With an entrance on the Strand, the large garden stretching back along the south side of the old Wardoff Covent Garden. In 1630, fourth Earl of Bedford, Francis Russell, commissioned Ingo Jones to design and build a church and three terraces of fine houses along the large square or piazza. This had been prompted by Charles I taking offence at the condition of the road and the houses along Long Acre, which were the responsibility of Russell and Henry Carey, second Earl of Monmouth. Russell and Carey complained that under the 1625 proclamation concerning buildings, which restricted building in and around London, they could not build new houses. For a fee of £2,000, the king then granted Russell a licence to build as many new houses on his land as he shall think fit and convenient. The houses initially attracted the wealth, though they moved out when the market developed on the south side of the square around 1654, and coffee houses, taverns and prostitutes moved in. The Bedford estate was expanded in 1669 to include Bloomsbury, when Lord Russell married Lady Rachel Vaughan, one of the daughters of the 4th Earl of Southampton. By the 18th century, Covent Garden had become a well-known red light district, attracting notable prostitutes as Betty Careless and Jane Douglas. Descriptions of the prostitutes and where to find them were provided by Harris's list of Covent Garden ladies, the essential guide and accessory for any serious gentleman of pleasure. In 1830, a market hall was built to provide a more permanent trading centre. In 1913, Herbert Russell, 11th Duke of Bedford, agreed to sell the Covent Garden estate for £2 million to the MP and land speculator Harry Mulby Dealey, who sold his option in 1918 to the Beecham family for £250,000. The Covent Garden estate was part of the Beecham Estates and Pills Limited from 1924 to 1928, after which it was managed by a successor company called Covent Garden Properties, owned by the Beechams and other private investors. This new company sold some properties at Covent Garden while becoming active in property investment in other parts of London. In 1962, the bulk of the remaining properties in the Covent Garden area, including the market, was sold to the newly established government-owned Covent Garden Authority for £3,925,000. By the end of the 1960s, Traffic congestion had reached such a level that the use of the square as a modern wholesale distribution market was becoming untenable, and significant redevelopment was planned. Following a public outcry, buildings around the square were protected in 1973, preventing redevelopment. The following year, the market moved to a new site in Nine Elms, between Battersea and Vauxhall, in southwest London. The square languished until its central building reopened as a shopping centre in 1980. After consulting with residents and local businesses, Westminster Council drew up an action plan to improve the area while retaining its historical character in 2004. The market buildings, along with several other properties in Covent Garden, were bought by a property company in 2006. Historically, the Bedford Estate defined the boundary of Covent Garden with Drury Lane to the east, the Strand to the south, St Martin's Lane to the west, and Long Acre to the north. However, over time, the area regarded as part of Covent Garden has expanded northwards along Long Acre to High Holborn. Since 1971, with the creation of the Covent Garden Conservation Area, which incorporated part of the area between St Martin's Lane and Charing Cross Road. Charing Cross Road has sometimes been taken as its western boundary. Long Acre is the main thoroughfare running northeast from St Martin's Lane to Drury Lane. Shelton Street, running parallel to the north of Long Acre, marks the London borough boundary between Camden and Westminster. Hi there, and thanks so much for listening to this podcast on the history of London. And if you're enjoying this, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up on YouTube. Now, if you want to get more involved with London Visited, don't forget you can join us as a member by going to patreon.com forward slash London Visited with so many different benefits. Or you can purchase a 4K photograph of London from our website, londonvisited.co.uk, both of which support us and keep the channel going.
Once again, thanks for listening. And now, back to the podcast. The area to the south of Longacre contains the Royal Opera House, the Market and Central Square, and most of the elegant buildings, theatres and entertainment facilities, including the Theatre Royal Drury Lane and the London Transport Museum, while the area to the north of Longacre is largely given over to independent retail units centred on Neal Street, Neal's Yard and Seven Dials. Though this area also contains residential buildings such as Oldham's Walk, built in 1981 on the sites of Oldham's Printworks, and is home to 7,000 residents. The Covent Garden estate was originally under the control of Westminster Abbey and lay in the parish of St Margaret. During a reorganisation in 1542, it was transferred to St Mountain in the Fields, and then in 1645, a new parish was created, splitting governance of the estate between the parishes of St Paul Covent Garden and St Martin, both still within the liberty of Westminster. St Paul Covent Garden was completely surrounded by the parish of St Martin in the Fields. It was grouped into the Strand District in 1855. In 1900, it became part of the Metropolitan Borough of Westminster and was abolished as a civil parish in 1922. The northern reaches of Covent Garden were within the ancient parish of St Giles in the Fields and outside the Liberty of Westminster. They were, from 1855 to 1900, part of the St Giles District and from 1900 part of the Metropolitan Borough of Holborn. Covent Garden came within the area of responsibility of the Metropolitan Board of Works from 1855 and, in 1889, became part of the County of London. Since 1965, Covent Garden falls within the London boroughs of Westminster and Camden. Covent Garden Market reopened in 1980 as a shopping arcade, with restaurants and a pub. The Central Hall has shops, cafes and bars, alongside the Apple Market stalls, selling antiques, jewellery, clothing and gifts. There are additional casual stores in the Jubilee Hall Market on the south side of the square. In 2010, what was then the largest Apple store in the world opened in the Piazza. Long Acre has clothes shops and boutiques, and Neil Street is noted for its numerous shoe shops. London Transport Museum and the side entrance to the Royal Opera House, box office and other facilities are also located on the square. During the late 1970s and 1980s, the Rock Garden music venue was popular with up-and-coming punk rock and new wave artists. The Royal Opera House, often referred to as simply Covent Garden, was constructed as the Theatre Royal in 1732, to a design by Edward Shepherd. During the first hundred years or so of its history, the theatre was primarily a playhouse, with a letters patent granted by Charles II, giving Covent Garden and Theatre Royal Drury Lane exclusive rights to present spoken drama in London. In 1734, the first ballet was presented. A year later, Handel's first season of operas began. Many of his operas were specifically written for Covent Garden and had their premieres here. It has been the home of the Royal Opera since 1945 and the Royal Ballet since 1946. The current building is the third theatre on the site following destructive fires in 1808 and 1857. The facade, foyer and auditorium were designed by Edward Barry and date from 1858. But almost every other element of the present complex dates from an extensive £178 million reconstruction in the 1990s. The main auditorium is Grade 1 listed building. The inclusion of the adjacent old floral hall, previously as a part of the old Covent Garden market, created a large new public gathering place. In 1779, the pavement outside the playhouse was the scene of the murder of Martha Ray, mistress of the Earl of Sandwich, by her admirer, the Reverend James Hackman. The first record of a new market in Covent Garden is in 1654, when market traders set up their stalls against the garden wall of Bedford House. The Earl of Bedford acquired a private charter from Charles II in 1670 for a fruit and vegetable market, permitting him and his heirs to hold a market every day except Sundays and Christmas Day. The original market, consisting of wooden stalls and sheds, became disorganised and disorderly, and John Russell, 6th Earl of Bedford, requested an Act of Parliament in 1813 to regulate it, then commissioned Charles Fowler in 1830 to design the neoclassical market building that is the heart of Covent Garden today. Further buildings were added, the Floral Hall, the Charter Market, and, in 1904, the Jubilee Market for Foreign Flowers. The current Theatre Royal on Drury Lane is the most recent of four incarnations, the first of which opened in 1663, making it the oldest continuously used theatre in London. 
For much of its first two centuries, it was, along with the Royal Opera House, a patent theatre, granted rights in London for the production of drama, and had a claim to be one of London's leading theatres. The first theatre, known as the Theatre Royal, Bridges Street, saw performances by Nell Gwynne and Charles Hart. After it was destroyed by fire in 1672, English dramatist and theatre manager Thomas Killigrew constructed a larger theatre on the same plot, which opened in 1674. Killigrew's theatre lasted nearly 120 years. In 1791, the building was demolished to make way for a larger theatre, which opened in 1794. However, that survived only 15 years, burning down in 1809. The building that stands today opened in 1812. It has been home to actors as diverse as Shakespearean actor Edmund Keane, child actress Clary Fisher, comedian Dan Leo, the comedy troupe Monty Python, who recorded a concert album there, and musical composer and performer Ivan Novello. Since November 2008, the theatre has been owned by composer Andrew Lloyd Webber and generally stages popular musical theatre. It is a Grade 1 listed building. The London Transport Museum is in a Victorian iron and glass building on the east side of the Market Square. It was designed as a dedicated flower market by William Rogers in 1871 and was first occupied by the museum in 1980. Previously, the transport collection had been held at Sion Park and Clapham. The first parts of the collection were bought together at the beginning of the 20th century by the London General Omnibus Company and began to preserve buses being retired from service. It was taken over at the beginning of the 20th century by the London Electric Railway and it became part of the London Passenger Transport Board in the 1930s and as part of the organisation passed through various successive bodies up to TfL, London Transport's Authority, since 2000. The Covent Garden building has on display many examples of buses, trams, trolley buses and rail vehicles from the 19th and 20th centuries as well as artefacts and exhibits relating to the operation and marketing of passenger services and the impact of the developing transport network has had on the city and its population. St Paul's, known as the Actors' Church, was built in 1633 at a cost of £4,000, though was not consecrated until 1638. In 1645, Covent Garden was made a separate parish and the church was dedicated to St Paul. How much of Jones's original building is left is unclear, as the church was damaged by fire in 1795 during restoration work but the rest is mostly Georgian or Victorian reconstruction. Street entertainment at Covent Garden was noted in Samuel Pepys' diary in May 1662, when he recorded the first mention of a Punch and Judy show in Britain. Impromptu performances for song and swimming were given by local celebrities in the 18th century. Covent Garden is licensed for street entertainment and performers audition for turntabled slots in a number of venues around the market, including the North Hall, West Piazza and South Hall Courtyard. The courtyard space is dedicated to classical music only. There are street performances at Covent Garden Market every day of the year, except Christmas Day. Shows run through the day and are about 30 minutes in length. Covent Garden, and especially the market, have appeared in a number of works. In 1867, Johann Strauss II, from Austria, composed Entering on Covent Garden, Memory of Covent Garden. Eliza Doolittle, a central character in George Bernard Shaw play Pygmalion, and the musical adaptation of Alan J. Lerner, My Fair Lady, is a Covent Garden flower seller. Alfred Hitchcock's 1972 film Frenzy is about a Covent Garden fruit vendor who becomes a serial sex killer, was set in the market where his father had been a wholesale greengrocer. Covent Garden is served by the Piccadilly Line at Covent Garden Tube Station on the corner of Longacre and James's Street. The station, much like the Piccadilly Line, was designed by Leslie Green and opened by the Great Northern Piccadilly and Brompton Railway in April 1907, four months after the services on the rest of the line began operating on the 15th of December 1906. The station is one of the few stations in central London for which platform access is only by lift or stairs. Due to high passenger numbers, 16 million annually, until improvements in 2007, entry to the station was sometimes restricted on busy days to reduce congestion on the platforms. The distance from Covent Garden to Leicester Square is less than 300 yards and is London's shortest tube journey. Stations outside the area including Charing Cross Tube and railway stations, Embankment, Leicester Square and Holborn Tube stations. While there are no longer any bus routes in Covent Garden itself, as of June 2019, since the permanent withdrawal, there are over 30 routes which pass very close by, mainly on the Strand or Kingsway. 
So, I hope you've enjoyed our in-depth look at Covent Garden. Whatever podcast service you use to listen to this, please do subscribe and get updates on new shows. And also, please leave us some feedback. Please let me know any places you'd like us to feature in future podcasts by emailing me directly at londonvisited at gmail.com or contacting us on Twitter or Instagram at London Visited or Facebook at The London Visited. Thanks for listening. Really hope you've enjoyed our podcast and we'll see you soon on the next one. Bye.